Um, welcome to our Youth Sunday. Please refer to the back of your bulletin for announcements. We now have a minute for mission from Kurt Simpson. Good morning. Uh, just wanted to mention, uh, we've talked about it some in the last few weeks, Kirkwood Creation Camp, which is coming up June 15th through the 19th. That is just a month away now. Um, that is going to be our Bible school for this year. And it's a, a, a joint effort of all the uh, Presbyterian churches here in the area. We need help with that. Uh, we not only need the kids to sign up, but we need help uh, with, with it. Uh, it's going to be from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., June 15th through the 19th. Um, if you can help out just one day or all week, that would be wonderful. Just see me or Dr. Phil or contact the church office and let us know if you can help out. That would be great. Thanks a lot. Please join us in our call to worship as printed in your bulletin. Morning. morning. Please join me in reading the opening sentences. We often find ourselves in foreign places. Lord, help us to keep our eyes on you. We are often faced with temptations from our modern world. Lord, help us to keep our eyes on you. We are often pressured by our peers to turn away from your kingdom. The first hymn is number 452, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Please join in saying the prayer of confession. Father, we often find ourselves turning from you. Help us to turn away from the patterns of our world and turn back to your ways. Thank you for your unending love for us and for always waiting for us to turn back with open arms. Help us to turn back to you and to stand firm in your ways. Through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, we know that you are with us and that you will never forsake us. Let us sing God's praises for his mercy on our lives.
This time I'd like to invite Joseph, Andrew, Kendrick, Madison, and Rachel to come down and join me here at the front. Five of our seven graduates who are members of the church, um, they were celebrated this morning at a delicious breakfast prepared and served by the Presbyterian women of our church. And information about each of them, where they're graduating from and where they're headed to in the fall. Um, Rachel is a student at the Early College High School in Kenansville and will be graduating or finishing in December. It's uh, a fundamental of our Presbyterian theology and beliefs that God has created us with inquisitive minds to use our minds to the glory of God and to the service of others. We're more than proud of y'all as we've seen you grow up and have watched your accomplishments and your leadership in the church and in your schools and in the community and we send you forth with our blessings and with our great love. Don't forget that we're here because we're not going to forget where y'all are. Um, congratulations, best wishes as you graduate and as you go through this final part of your year. And Rachel, as you finish up in December and as you head off to college. And I have something to give to you. <laughs> Joseph, this is from the church. These are Bibles that we give to you. We give Bibles when um, people go into the fourth grade and then when they graduate from high school. And we hope that you'll use it and that it'll mean a lot to you. Andrew, congratulations. Madison, congratulations. Rachel. I guess this is the only one left. Kendrick, <laughs> congratulations. Would you join me in a round of applause? Please? How many of y'all go to school? Or just you? So do y'all have rules to follow? Yeah. Do you like following those rules? Sometimes. Sometimes. Probably not all the time. Well, we don't always like to follow rules. And, but that's how that's what we're supposed to do, right? So who has a brother or sister? Mm -hmm. So do you, I bet you have rules that you can't annoy your brother or sister, you can't mess with them, can't be fighting with them, right? So sometimes rules can be hard to follow, I know, because I have a brother. <laughs> and especially if they're really, really getting on your nerves and you're just like, leave me alone. Mm -hmm. I you say that sometimes. <laughs> well, they might not be fun to follow, but our teachers and our parents, they make rules because they love us, just like God. And he makes rules for us, but sometimes they're not easy to always obey them. But we have to decide to follow God's rules. And even when we might not want to, God loves us and his plans for us are better than we could ever imagine. So next time y'all go to decide, you, what, next time y'all might go to break a rule, think about what God wants you to do and maybe pray for strength because God's strength, we can do anything. Now, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, please let us choose your way to live. Remind us you still love us even when we break the rules you forgive us. Give us strength when we are feeling weak and want to break a rule, and let us encourage others to follow your plan for our lives. Amen.
day dawning It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes As the Lord of my soul Please join me for the prayer of illumination. Loving God, be gracious with us, we have not stray from your warnings, since we do not live by bread alone. May us not be your word. Use your word, the Holy Spirit, to guide us through Jesus Christ, who alone is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. The Old Testament lesson today is from Jan Daniel chapter 1, verses 5 through 16. And you can follow along on, your pu on page 716 in your pew Bible. The king assigned them daily provisions from the royal food and from the wine that he drank. They were to be trained for three years, and at the end of that time they were to serve in, in the king's court. Among them from the descendants of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief, the chief official gave them other names. He gave the name Belteshazzar to Daniel, Shadrach to Hananiah, Meshach to Mishael, and Abednego to Azariah. Daniel determined that he would not defile himself with the king's food or the wine he drank. 
So he asked permission from the chief official not to defile himself. God had granted Daniel favor and compassion from the chief official. Yet he said to Daniel, My lord, the king assigned your food and drink. I'm afraid of what would happen if he saw your faces looking thinner than those of the other, of the other young men your age. You would endanger my life with the king. So Daniel said to the guard whom the chief official had assigned to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please test your servants for ten days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then examine our appearance and the appearance of, other, of the other young men who are eating the king's food and deal with the, your, servants, your servants based on what you see. He agreed with them about this and tested them for ten, ten days. At the end of ten days, they looked better and healthier than, the other, than all the young men who were eating the king's food. So the guard continued to remove their food and wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables. Please join in singing our next hymn, How Great Is Our God, which is printed in your bulletin. New Testament lesson today is from 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58, and you can follow along in your pew Bible on page 937. Therefore, my dear brothers, be steadfast and movable, always excelling in the Lord's work, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Growing up as a child in, in southeastern North Carolina, one of the first things people ask you when you're growing up is, who is your team? And when you hear this, you know that it's not professional team. You know exactly what they're talking about, your favorite college team, and more specifically, State, Duke, or the other school in Orange County that <laughs> we're not going to talk about because we're in a holy place. But, <laughs> but seriously. I grew up and my time came to go to school and I was faced with this question. In the first few days of school on the playground of Harold's Christian Academy, I was faced with this question. Nearly everyone was faced with this question at one time or the other. Most of you probably have been too. How you answer this question will determine your group of friends and who you would spend time with for the rest of your life in school and in life. 
I had to plant my flag in a territory, State, Carolina, or Duke. My answer, of course, North Carolina State University. If I had answered that question any other way, my parents probably wouldn't have picked me up from the bus that day. <laughs> but as my dad always said, if I wanted to go to that other school, then I would have to find a way to pay for it or have a full ride because he definitely wasn't going to pay for it. <laughs> so the decision was pretty much already made for me, but I fully embraced it and still do today. This decision that many of us probably had to make as a child applies to our relationship with God as well. We had to make a decision to plant our flag in God's kingdom as opposed to the ways of the world. We are always going to be faced with challenges in our life that will test our faith. We have to decide whether we're going to turn to God or turn to the ways of the world. We see this in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, as we heard earlier. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that, it, that it, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. We see, we see here that no matter what, if we follow the Lord's ways and plant our flag in God's kingdom, that our past will be made straight. The Lord promises us that there will be trials and temptations in our lives. However, the Lord also promises that He will not forsake us and that He will always be with us. The phrase, do not fear or fear not, is mentioned 365 times in the Bible, the most mentioned phrase in the entire Bible. And this is ironic because it's 365, which applies to every single day of our life. But we know that we can trust in God and not fear because He is with us. We know that we should turn to the Lord because He has prevailed through many generations. We see this in Daniel 1, 5 through 16, when Daniel and his friends were forced to make a decision whether to stand in God's kingdom or conform to the patterns of the world. But they decided to plant their flag in God's kingdom and not partake in the royal food and wine because of the rules that God had set before them. God blessed them with a healthier and more nourished body after the 10 days because they followed the guidelines that God had set for them. This can also be seen in one of my mentor's lives, Chris Embler, who went on a mission trip to Peru. One major difference, however, in this mission trip is they didn't take a plane or a boat or a car, is they walked there. Yes, they walked to Peru. Chris and his wife Rachel walked 15,000 miles from Smithfield, from, from Smithfield, North Carolina to Peru, South America. Now they didn't walk all 15,000 miles, but they gained rides along the way because God prevailed for them. And they, the two faced many challenges along the way, but they were continuously planted, but they continuously planted their flag in God's kingdom. Through their courage to trust in God and plant their flag in His kingdom, they led many people to Christ through their testimony and interactions with people that they met along the way. In my own personal life, I have had to make, it a, I have had to make many decisions to plant my flag in God's kingdom. More specifically, my, def, my decision to plant my flag in God's kingdom led me to turning my life over to the Lord for good. Three summers ago, I was presented with the opportunity to go to Philmont Scout Ranch in Cimarron, New Mexico. At first glance, I was not too enthralled with the thought of hiking for 10 days in the hot sun in the middle of the summer, in the middle of the desert, with everything I needed for the week on my back. I was totally opposed to going on this trip at first. Before the, fir before the first of many practice hikes, I called my parents to tell them that I was not going on the practice hike because I did not want to go on the trip to Philmont. My mom immediately told me that my dad wanted me to go on the trip with him, not to go to Philmont for the, ter for the third time, but to spend time with him, but, but for him to spend time with me. She then told me of how I should take advantage of this opportunity because her dad was not in the picture for the majority of her childhood, and that I should be thankful for this opportunity to spend time with my father. I was then convinced that I should go on the trip with an open mind and excitement to be able to spend time with my dad. Little did I know that God was going to change my life radically through this experience. When the time came to embark on the trip, my family was faced with yet another trial. My granddad, my Dida, was sick and near his end. However, before I left, my Dida was smiling and happy as ever as I said goodbye to him in hospice. However, before I, yeah, before I left for Philmont, I will never forget when I was saying goodbye, he asked me if he could go with me to Philmont. I will never forget when, and I said, of course, I will pick you up in the morning. That was the last time I talked to him. And while I was on the trail at Philmont, my Dida passed away. My dad was informed of the news on top of Baldy Mountain, the tallest mountain on the ranch. This was one of the only places where we could get cell phone service since we were in the middle of nowhere. Once my dad received the news, he decided to wait until we got back to base camp to inform me of the news. Once we got back, he told me, and I immediately knew that God was in control and that he meant for me to be at Philmont when my Dida passed away 
leaving me with a final happy memory of him. I decided to turn to God and trust in him, knowing that my earthly grandfather was gone, but that God will always be my father no matter what happens. I made this decision to plant my flag in God's kingdom instead of becoming angry with him and asking questions of why. Through this, God has changed my life dramatically and has blessed me in so many ways. Now today, 13 of our youth have decided to plant their flag in God's kingdom by their confirmation into this church. As seniors, we are about to embark on a journey where we will be faced with many more challenges in our life, many things that we have never even thought of being faced with. But we will have to decide whether to plant our flag in God's kingdom or in the ways of the world. So now, why not plant your flag in God's kingdom? Jesus' disciples decided to follow Jesus without even knowing him. So why not you? We know of his great goodness. We've sung about it in 10,000 reasons and how great is our God. So why not us? Why don't we plant our flag in God's kingdom? I will close with this analogy that someone once told me regarding relationships and dating. <laughs> Do you tr All right, I want you to think about this and apply it to whatever problems that you face in your life. Do you trust in God with your salvation and eternal life? Most of you are probably thinking, yes, of course I do. That's such a dumb question. But so now, if you trust him with something that serious, then why don't you trust in him with, to, find, to find you the right partner in your life? Now ponder on that and apply it to other aspects of your life. If you trust in him, why don't you trust him with your job, with your finances, with whatever you face on a daily basis? If you trust in God with your salvation and eternal life, you can trust him with anything. Plant your flag in God's kingdom, and he will bless you with more than you could ever imagine. Amen. Now as we come to God, let us remember um, sympathy to the family of Annie Carr, Boothby, who died on May 11th in, New in Norfolk, Virginia. She was Oscar Smith's first cousin. Also for the elders and minister as, they, as the session meets on Tuesday evening, May 19th. And also as we let us pray for our new confirmation class as they embark on a new journey in their life and a new step in their faith. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for a time where we can just come together and we can just be in your presence and we can worship you. We can sing your praises and we can hear your word. We, we ask that you would be with us in our daily lives, that you would be with us and help us to be able to plant our flag in your kingdom and to not conform to the patterns of this world, Lord. Just be with us and help us to be able to seek you out in everything that we do. We ask that you would just be with all of us as there are many hurting hearts in this room, Lord, and all across the world. Help us to be able to turn to you and feel your love. We ask that you would be with our 13 members of this confirmation class, Lord. We ask that you would just be with them and bless them and help them to be able to feel your presence like they've never felt it before. And just help us all to be able to encourage them and lift them up and always point them in the direction of your ways. Please just build us as we go out in our lives and just help us to be able to live for you and serve you. In your name we pray. Amen. This time I'd like to invite the 13 members of our confirmation group to come and stand up here and invite their elder covenant partners to come and stand next to them or behind them.
on behalf of the session. No, poor Addie. On behalf of the session, I present the following young people who have been received as confirmed and active members of the Church of Jesus Christ and of the Wallace Presbyterian Church pending their public professions of faith and baptisms. Cameron Grace Blue, daughter of Clay and Noel Blue. Garrett Wade Bullard, son of John and Susie Bullard. Sarah Ellison Caron, daughter of Bill and Susan Caron. Anna Grace Carr, daughter of Watts and Tracy Carr. Madeline Garnett Coombs, daughter of Roger and Vera Coombs. Rachel Ann Cottle, to receive the sacrament of baptism, daughter of Lindsay and Jennifer Cottle. Mary Kellen Creech, to receive the sacrament of baptism, daughter of Ricky and Laura Creech. Sarah Pearl Farrier, daughter of Chuck and Gina Farrier. Posey Hill Lanier, son of Denny and Donna Lanier. Jane Caroline Minshew, daughter of Todd and Maria Minshew. Colby Connolly Fanoff, son of Rich and Carrie Fanoff. Elizabeth Weldon Seals, daughter of Jim and Danielle Seals. Priscilla Lydia Thompson, daughter of Braun and Georgette Thompson. This is a special day in the life of our congregation and in the lives of these young people and their families. In your bulletin, you'll find information about the meaning and purpose of confirmation, and you'll also find a list of the young people, their parents, and their elder covenant partners. Since February, these young people and Regina and I, along with different elders and church members, have played games together, we've prayed, we've spent two nights at the church sleeping on the floor, we have enjoyed fellowship, we've studied the Bible, we've talked about what we believe, we've learned more about the church, we've asked questions about our faith, we've laughed a lot, we've led worship, we've gone on a retreat at Camp Kirkwood, we've worked on a new youth space upstairs in the Curry Building, and we've thought about what God is calling us to do as disciples of Jesus Christ. And at this time, I would like to ask anybody and everybody who had a part in Confirmation 2015 to stand up. That means if you're a parent who helped cook a meal, if you're an elder who visited with us, if you helped do the tech stuff for the youth room, anything that you've done, if you'd please stand up. Thank you very much. I just want you to see that this has been a, a journey of love on the part of many people and a fulfillment of vows that you take at a baptism to encourage and to nourish and nurture these young people. On Sunday, May 3rd, the members of the Confirmation 2015 presented what they had learned and they shared their personal statements of faith with the elders and me. And this morning, Mary Kellen shared her statement of faith with the elders. The session at that time voted to receive them as confirmed active members of the Church of Jesus Christ upon their public profession of faith today. Anna Grace made a profession of faith and was baptized by her grandfather at another church. Anna Grace and her parents and I agreed that it would be meaningful and significant for her to be a part of Confirmation 2015 and to reaffirm her faith. Rachel Ann and Mary Kellen have asked to be baptized upon making their public professions of faith. And as we celebrate with these young people today, let us all remember our own baptismal vows and our professions of faith, and let us recommit ourselves as disciples of Jesus Christ, or in the words of our great preacher today, let us plant our flag in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Guys, we've talked about these questions since February, and I'm going to ask you these four questions. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? Do you? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Will you? 
And finally, will you be a faithful member of this congregation, sharing its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? Will you? Do we, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Cameron, Garrett, Ellie, Anna Grace, Madeline, Rachel Ann, Mary Kellen, Sarah Pearl, Hill, Jane Caroline, Colby, Elizabeth, and Lydia, by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging them to know and follow Christ and to be faithful members of this church. Do we? I want to show you something that's hanging from the lectern, a beautiful banner that Sandy Miller made, but the design was done by the confirmation group. Um, it's a cross with a rising sun behind it, and the theme verse from Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And this banner is gonna hang in the youth space upstairs in the Curry building. At this time, I'd like to ask Mary Kellen and Rachel Ann, there you are, if you'd step over here by the baptismal font. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus Christ and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom he has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. In baptism, God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his own death and resurrection. And by water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, which is the body of Christ and we are joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Again, I would invite you and encourage you as you witness and celebrate this sacrament today that you would remember with joy your own baptism and recommit yourselves to Jesus Christ. Rachel Ann and Mary Kellen, do you all desire to be baptized? Rachel Ann. Rachel Ann Cottle, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Rachel Ann, child of God, you have been marked by God and sealed by God's Holy Spirit. God bless you. Mary Kellen Creech, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mary Kellen, child of God, you've been marked as God's own and sealed with God's Holy Spirit. God bless you. Let's pray. Lord God, you spoke and the worlds came to be. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh to dwell among us. Then your spirit blew across a curious lot of people, and you named us the church. Holy God, place your blessings upon Cameron, Garrett, Ellie, Anna Grace, Madeline, Rachel Ann, Mary Kellen, Sarah Pearl, Hill, Jane Caroline, Colby, Elizabeth, and Lydia, who accept full membership into the life and ministry of the Wallace Presbyterian Church and in the Church of Jesus Christ. Make joys in faith a celebration. Make questions in the faith a challenge. Make confidence in the faith a gladness. Make pilgrimage in the faith a growing experience. Make friends in the church a community. Make elders in the faith worthy examples. We make all of our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. To all of you, with joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you 
to share with us in the ministry of Jesus Christ, our Lord, for we are all one in him. We have some things that we want to give you, and I want to tell you what they are. First is a stole. And Miss Nancy made these stoles as she does each year. And on each stole are the four liturgical colors, red, green, white, and purple. But they're not, in it. They're not the same order on all the stoles. So each stole is unique. Each of these young people designed his or her own stole based on symbols of the Christian faith and painted them. And at this time, we're going to give the stoles to their elder covenant partners. The stole is a symbol of discipleship. We talked about how when you yoke a pair of oxen, it's the, so that they can walk along together. And the stole is a symbol of walking with Jesus Christ. So elders, I would invite you to put the stole on your young person and to share with them what you have um, to give them today. Ellen, this is a certificate of baptism for you. And Rachel Ann, certificate of baptism for you. We have some other things to give them. Um, certificates of confirmation. And then two gifts that I want to just say a word about. One is a cross. And on the bottom of each cross is your name and today's date. These were made by a friend of mine, John Bacco, who used to be the pastor of the Beulahville Presbyterian Church. John retired a few years ago, lives in South Carolina. Um, I think in January I was at a meeting at the Presbyterian office and John wandered in. He was in town. Um, and some of us were talking with him and he said, I've got something for all of you. And he went out in his car and he came back and gave each one of us one of these crosses. So I emailed John before confirmation began in February, and I said, if I send you the money for the, for the materials and your labor and your postage, will you make one of these for each of our young people? And he said, no, I won't take your money, but I'll make them. <laughs> and he sent them to me. And so I have one on my desk and want to give one, each one of you one of those. And then in the bag is a gift from one of our new ministries, the prayer shawl ministry. And these are prayer pockets. And I'm going to let you, when you have a chance, open it and see what it's all about. But these were made especially for you. They weren't just sitting on a shelf. But the prayer shawl ministry came to me and said, what can we make for the confirmation group? And they have been prayed over and they've been made with love for this very special day today.
bear with me for a minute. After worship, don't go anywhere because we're going to take a picture of everybody, okay? What a joy it's been to work with this group of young people. And this is not the end. This is a part of the journey, the confirmation journey. Um, the anthem they sang today was their theme song that they adopted. Um, this group made a video to send to the session. 13 reasons, based on 10,000 reasons, 13 reasons we want a youth space. 13 reasons we want a youth leader. Um, pray for these folks. Encourage them. You've seen them lead worship. You've seen what they can do in our church. You've benefited from their leadership already. As I wrote in the May newsletter, and I understand what people mean when they say this, but a lot of times people say, young people are the church of tomorrow. They are the church of today. They are leaders in our church. They are members of our church, of the church of Jesus Christ. They may be the leaders of the church tomorrow as adults, but they are the church today. Embrace them, love them, continue to show them the way of Jesus Christ. Regina, it's for you. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the faith of these young people. Thank you for their love of one another and of this church, and especially their love of you. Thank you for all the times we've had together in the last three months. Thank you for how my faith has grown by being with them, by hearing their questions and hearing their, their deep beliefs. And Lord, I pray for your hand to be upon each of them in their lives. Uh, and in the days and years to come. We thank you especially for your love for us in Jesus Christ and your grace for us. We thank you for his death and resurrection. And we thank you for the calling to be the church of Jesus Christ. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations. Thank you all. You can go have a seat. Robert. 
burn like a lion, God's not dead, he's surely alive, he's living on the inside, roaring like a lion, roaring, he's roaring, he's roaring like a lion, he's roaring. the sound of revival. Let heaven roar and fire fall. Come shake the ground with the sound of revival. Let heaven roar and fire fall. Come shake the ground with the sound God's not dead, he's surely alive, he's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. God's not dead, he's surely alive, he's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. My God's not dead, he's surely alive, he's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. God's not dead, he's surely alive, he's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. He's roaring, he's roaring, he's roaring. Almighty and merciful God, from whom comes all that is good, we praise you for your mercies, for your goodness that has created us, your grace that has sustained us, your discipline that has corrected us, your patience that has borne with, with us, and your love that has redeemed us. Help us to love you and to be thankful for all your gifts by serving you and delighting to do your will. We, will, we now give back to you in thankfulness a very small portion of what you have given us in kindness. We acknowledge that the world and its resources are not ours, but yours, and that you have put us in charge as your trustees. Help us to exercise responsibility, the authority you give us in this world. Bless, these, bless the gifts we now present back to you so that they may be used in the work of your kingdom on this earth. Amen. Let us affirm what we believe with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now join us with hymn number 69.